Yeah, I've seen your comments, and I get it. Windows 11 is exciting for people who are Windows users, but just another wave of bad stuff for those who are ride or die privacy fans or Linux users. You know how I said there was no way in hell I'd switch to Linux full time many times over the course of the past few years on this channel? Well, that finally changed today, or a month ago, kind of. Well, I'm glad I put kind of in my original script because things got a little hairy. <laughs> I have been using Linux on this rig for three or four weeks now, and most of that before this video was recorded, of course. I used it for a few weeks when the sleeper PC, you know, as I was wrapping up that video was here in the studio, and then I've used it for a week and a half in the house as I was playing games and using that to relax at night and finally had what I wanted going. And not literally just the night after I recorded the original take for this video in the following two days did the entire experience deteriorate to the point where I just had to do an entire fresh install. And all of the usual complaints I have about Linux and the problems with it and the communities that try to support it came back in full force. But we're gonna we're gonna work through this video because a lot of what I had originally said I want to still say. I just want to let you know that this got a little bit more interesting than it originally sounded. <laughs> I'm Evil's Vox, the stream professor, and my history with Linux has been a colorful one. I started using Linux as a kid in the 90s with Red Hat 5, and spent my later middle and high school years using earlier Ubuntu releases on my laptops for school and work and secondary PCs. I still have some of the release discs. I also covered Linux off and on over my entire career on this channel, and a previous one, with anything from showing you how much faster it can make your computers, to showing you how to set it up in VMs, PC build ideas, covering the release of Proton with Windle and a vlog series a few years ago, trying to switch to Linux for my gaming rig. But for gaming or work PCs, I'm used to always pulled back. This usually comes down to a big core reason. The things I want to do and the tools I want to do them with are not supported. Editing software, plugins, capture cards, audio interfaces, multiplayer games, everywhere I turn, there's something that just flat out doesn't work at all on Linux or is a far worse experience than its Mac or Windows counterparts, and the Linux alternatives don't cut it. My work PC isn't going anywhere anytime soon, I still have to cover Windows in general, use tools that don't run on Linux, and use software to make my videos that don't run on Linux. DaVinci Resolve may have a Linux release, but my plugins don't, nor do the uh, various other apps I use to make my work. Though this rig might swap for whatever M1 Mac Pro desktop Apple has cooking for the next year or so, based on the MacBook Pro M1 Max performance I've been seeing. Stay tuned for that. My gaming rig, however, is something I've been trying to switch to Linux ever since Proton released and I think I finally made it work. This is all thanks to a wonderful distribution called Garuda. Specifically, <laughs> the Garuda Leet Speed Dragonized Edition KDE release. This distribution is a flavor of Arch Linux designed to, from the ground up to give you everything you need to use and game without fighting terminals and looking up shady install scripts online or accidentally uninstalling your desktop environment to install Steam. What is the point of having a, oh, my computer just hard reset. And I mean everything. Steam, Wine, Proton, Lutris, DXVK, proprietary NVIDIA drivers and tools to manage your NVIDIA GPU if you're using one, FreeSync and G-Sync works, you get support and configuration for a wide gamut of controllers for Xbox, PlayStation, and even Nintendo Switch gamepads. It is wild. The initial install process is buttery smooth and gives you so much control to get exactly what you want as quickly as possible even Discord. I'm serious, I know that every time someone tells you that Linux is easier to use now, you go and try it and you immediately have to type in some junk in the terminal to get it to work. I'm pretty sure I've used the terminal a total of four times on my main installation of Garuda Linux that I've been running for all of October so far, and most of that was to fight with the settings for a specific modded version of an older Call of Duty game, and I didn't even need to do that in the end, and that's it. You might notice how up and up this experience seems to be compared to my previous vlog series or the ongoing one on Linus Tech Tips with Luke and Linus. I originally scripted most of this video prior to their experiences going live, and I've come back to revise it because, oh boy, are they just running into some nonsense. The same nonsense that I run into every time someone convinces me it's fine. Yes, I've used Linux since the 90s, but I've done so casually, and every time someone tells me that to install a basic thing or configure a simple setting, that I need to dig through the man pages for a specific command on an infinite scrolling terminal window, or every time I encounter an issue that I should just be using an entirely separate distro in the first place, I throw my entire PC out the window and start anew. Little did I come to expect that this very experience would also have me throwing my computer out the window. So Garuda 
is still pretty cool. Everything that I said about it coming with everything you need for gaming and the like, still true. I still want to point out that all of that is still valid. But that comes at a cost. First and foremost, if you're unaware about how Linux distributions and stuff works, and again, I mentioned in this video, like I want to do a Linux demystified for gamers series or something like that, or for streamers, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Garuda is a distribution based on the Arch flavor of Linux. Arch is more of a kind of rig it yourself, more experimental, hacky workaround kind of type of Linux where you're previously you used to always have to build your own and all of that. And it is a rolling release style of distribution. Whereas the Ubuntu's and the Mints and stuff like that of the world, the Debian based distros are you have cyclical releases and then you have regular updates that come in, but Arch is something that is constantly updating. Literally packaged or packages are checked for updates every hour and it will literally tell you that there are new updates constantly. And these break things and I have been recommended videos from people on how to make Arch more stable. Those videos usually delve into in incredibly anti-user rants about how things like installing updates are just the user being dumb because Linux people hate users apparently. It's just... That stuff blows my mind. The point is, you're not actually supposed to run updates very often, and if you do, it is supposed to be your job as the end user to then research which updates are the right updates to install, and not install packages that might have been marked as outdated because they can break your system by installing broken other dependencies that the package needs, but also, if you, if you install a program and then it becomes outdated, you just have to leave it alone. It's a whole ordeal. And that is where things really got kind of scary and messy for me after it worked fine for like two weeks. But I'm I'm gonna let you I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the original big bold statement I wanted to stand behind for this video, and we'll come back to this. Despite everything that I said in past Linux videos, I can confidently sit here today and say that Garuda Dragonized Linux, other than having way too many different versions of which Garuda you want to choose, a plague that Linux has always suffered from. Garuda is by far the most feature complete, user friendly, get started and go installation and onboarding experience of any operating system, Windows, Mac or Linux that I have ever used. And it stays that way once you're using it. The seams show sometimes, but this has been the most pleased I've been with my computer in a very long time. Yeah, the, she the seams show big time once you started interacting more with the arch part of the distro and it definitely didn't stay that way. So I, I still stand behind the stance that the entire installation process of Garuda was incredible. It gave you all of the options to install a bunch of different programs and set up your various game installers, Lutris and Wine and Steam and all of that in ways that, again, Linus ran into trying to just install Steam from the Pop Shop and Pop OS completely bricked his operating system. Well, it uninstalled his DE uh, and all sorts of other stuff. It comes with all of that built in. But apparently the changes that they make behind the scenes to really make it, you know, so customized and things like that, which is often the case with these more niche or edge case distributions, uh, makes it really fragile. So whenever things up update on the Arch side of things, it can break stuff in Garuda. And I ran into this wall big time. So the first time I started having problems, I just wanted to install RetroArch. <laughs> I was going through my list that I had for my script for this video, capturing gameplay footage, capturing screen, sh screen capture and stuff that I'm still using for this video because it's effectively the same for different operating systems. Uh, but to, to illustrate my point, and I realized I didn't have any emulator footage, so I pulled up the Garuda, you know, gamer program, which helps you install a bunch of different games and emulators and all that, which everyone brags about as being a cool inclusion. I thought it was pretty neat. I chose RPCS3, uh, PPSPP for the PlayStation Portable emulator, the PS2 emulator. I chose RetroArch and then a couple open source games like Zonotic and things like that that I usually want on my system. Anyway. I click apply and suddenly it's updating wine staging and a bunch of other weird stuff that it wasn't supposed to update and then things started getting weird. I uh, First and foremost the thing that got weird was after it just randomly closed the terminal that it popped up to run all these installations it didn't seem like it really installed much of anything that I originally had and I don't have any of this on video because I wasn't recording me installing the program I just wanted to show the program because installing a program is not an unrealistic thing for a user to do despite what some of these weird videos and support forums might tell you. Turns out that the Garuda Gamer program in order to install programs Prior to installing those programs runs the pacman-syu command, which is a full system update. So despite everyone in coming out of the woodwork every time we talk about Windows updates to say that Linux is so much better, you're considered a stupid user for ever installing updates in the first place, 
And it's not always in your control with every universal application in Linux, whether updates even get installed on your system. The hypocrisy is everywhere, but that's not the point. All right, here's an example of this in action. I installed Garuda on a test bench so I could just get some final screen captures to kind of illustrate my points for this video. I told it to install OBS Studio. That's all I wanted, that and the optional dependencies. And instead it's installing six gigabytes worth of stuff, which are not in the things I selected in the optional dependencies. It's just running away with so much extra stuff to install 66 other things just to get OBS Studio. This doesn't happen on other distros. <laughs> so by trying to install a singular program, Apparently it decided it needed to update the entire system on the whole, which again, wasn't ideal, wasn't what I chose. And in doing so, it broke, I think, everything. Well, not, not really everything, but it, it, it installed some other, you know, it, it replaced some important packages that made Garuda kind of Garuda, like the customized stuff. It replaced those with more general purpose Arch stuff. It somehow updated Wine in a way that just broke. Like, half of the games, I, I talk about, I think later in this video, I talk about uh, getting my Call of Duty mods to work for Call of Duty 4, uh, World at War, Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3, things like that. Those just didn't run anymore, which was my first red flag that something was really wrong. Because I, I was, because uh, I included in the script, I was like, I got some of my favorite multiplayer games that aren't modern running, and I was super stoked. I went to play after that update, and they just didn't run anymore. I got like weird fatal errors and Windows crashes and things like that. I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. It worked yesterday. What the hell? Apparently, it just completely borked Wine, and I tried doing all sorts of stuff. I completely removed all packages relating to Wine, reinstalled them. I tried manually selecting my versions. I tried rerunning the Lutris and scripts and stuff like that that I used to install the mod in the games in the first place. They didn't run. I tried just re-downloading Call of Duty 4 from Steam, Steam and running it vanilla, which has a platinum rating on Proton TV. I even selected the manual one that everyone said worked with it and everything. Still got the fatal errors. And then other games stopped working as well. Again, I removed all the wine things. I manually installed all the packages and dependencies for Lutris and nothing was working. Started running into other issues. I pulled a Hail Mary and uh, Garuda actually gives you a reinstall all packages option. So I kind of figured, hey, this might be something akin to Windows is like, let's just reset everything button. Well, it tried to reinstall all packages. It probably failed at some point and then said I needed to reboot to apply the changes. And then it just gave me errors and would never let me back into the operating system. So the weeks of customizations and game downloads and everything that I did, the game downloads, which by the way, Ran very slowly. I don't know if Garuda just couldn't interact with the 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 driver of my particular uh, network card or something for some reason. But at multiple instances, be it in the studio and in the house, I kept asking myself why Steam was running downloading so slowly, and so did like updates and stuff like that. Whereas Kubuntu downloads super fast now. I attempted to reinstall Garuda, just over it, just put the same drive in, reinstall everything, and it appears whatever updated packages it grabs from the Arch repository and all of that just breaks Garuda, or at least on my system. Because again, I installed from a fresh install. I was like, all right, I learned my lesson. I was going to reinstall Garuda. I was going to run updates beforehand. And then I was going to set up, there's like time shift and snapshots with ButterFS and things like that that you can set up. So that if an update breaks things, you could theoretically shift backwards to one of those previous snapshots, which is one of the recommended things because Arch is a distro that just breaks stuff often. And the entire point of being a Linux user is just to keep fixing your computer instead of using one that just works from the beginning, apparently. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I am getting super salty and like snarky about a lot of this because the big frustration that I have, and why you might see me kind of lash out against Linux users in my comments or things like that, is anytime I talk about Windows related things, I get an onslaught of people who say that I'm evil for using Windows or just keep pestering me that you should use Linux, talk about when I'm going to cover it more, and despite the fact that I have used it for my entire life, it is always this, things work great until they get catastrophic all of a sudden, or even just basic things turn catastrophic, especially if you don't know how to troubleshoot it properly, and despite everyone saying that you don't need to use the terminal much anymore, every guide to just install like OBS or a random program is going to have you open the terminal. Even if there's a way to do it without it, if you're a new user, you're not going to know that. And then all the attitudes I find, especially from the arts crowd, is just this anti-user like, 
if the user <laughs> arch isn't unstable the users are just bad at using it and when the case in point example is user ran updates update broke system user to blame running updates is an expected user behavior if an expected user behavior breaks the system the operating system is to blame not the user when windows updates break windows you may show up and say ha 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 come use linux but you still blame microsoft for the update being broken not for the user for running the update anyway all that to be said i reinstalled garuda and even with whatever it updates it attempted to download like during the installation after my first boot back into it just trying to run the basic system update that i did the first time would not work at all it couldn't install packages it kept saying the gpg keys were missing even though i told it to add them like in the prompt it'd be like press internet or press wide add why add and then it'd be like nope they're gone can't update and it just cancels the entire process which is like a bajillion updates same thing with installing programs it just purely wasn't functional anymore so i said screw it that was the that went from the best experience i ever had to a video that i already shot for it to expected catastrophe and i wanted to go back to kubuntu because uh, I still wanted to stick with KDE, but you know, Ubuntu is good old reliable. It's much harder to break overall, and we move on from there. But let's talk about the overall what works great in Linux and things like that, conceptually, <laughs> continuing the video here. It's not just about the operating system. Gaming on Linux has come a long way, too. Ever since the introduction of Proton and DXVK back in 2018, which allow you to basically translate DirectX titles to the Vulkan rendering engine, which works on Linux, and run games in compatibility layers that run on Linux, often on par with, or in some cases faster than the Windows native performance you'd get, more and more games continue to be made to work through both developer support and community contributions towards configurations and install scripts for Lutris and so on. Valve's upcoming Steam Deck, which also ships with Linux by default, is sure to be a catalyst for more developers to follow suit, as their games will need to run there. Valve also even just pushed an update to Half-Life 2, introducing Vulkan support and other high-spec improvements and patching ancient bugs, so you know they're serious. After two years of begging, Easy Anti-Cheat finally updated their Linux client and enabled Proton compatibility for Windows games running on Linux, which is supposed to only require a basic SDK update and just work but most developers of games using EAC have yet to implement it or comment on it. This means I still can't play games like Apex Legends or Halo Master Chief Collection multiplayer, unfortunately, and it's doubtful that hardcore anti-cheat for games like Valorant or Warzone's upcoming model will work anytime soon. Literally as I'm writing this, a Steam beta and Proton experimental update just released which enables games with the CEG DRM to run properly, which includes games like Mafia 2, Hitman Absolution, The Darkness 2, Grid 2, Warhammer 40k Space Marine, and so on. I also wanted to applaud 1047 Games, who released a Linux native port of Splitgate seemingly as soon as the Easy Anti-Cheat compatibility released. They didn't even just enable the new EAC for Proton, they specifically gave us a full fat native port. So while most of my multiplayer games that I prefer to play aren't working yet, I'll be playing a lot more Splitgate, and I'm fine with that. I've had a blast playing a variety of games so far. Hades, Streets of Rage 4, RuneScape, Splitgate of course, Doom Eternal, Unreal Tournament, Warframe, Battlefield 4 and Bad Company 2, Titanfall 2, Cyberpunk, so many games just run wonderfully. To monitor the game performance, we have tools like Mango HUD, which run with G-Overlay, which is an RTSS-like overlay for frame rates, frame times, temperatures, clock speeds, etc. And awesome tools like Replay Sorcery and Shadow Replay attempt to give you the NVIDIA Shadow Play-like capture capabilities, though I've had issues getting those to accept hotkey inputs on my specific configuration. OBS Studio is of course Linux native and works wonderfully. The version you get with Garuda comes fully updated with everything working, including NVENC, which has been an issue on some Arch distros. That being said, I am having a weird performance quirk here where sometimes when recording I get encoder overloaded issues in scenarios where I absolutely would not on Windows, just basic 1440p 60 game recording. It's not a huge amount, but it's really frustrating to not figure that out yet. So far, it seems like my GPU might be down clocking for some reason or something, or maybe it's just getting too hot in the sleeper build. Still got to figure that out. But I've got custom themes, mouse pointers with scale up de decently for high DPI screens, 144 hertz working great. You can even enable G-Sync on FreeSync monitors with the NVIDIA X server settings tool, which is awesome. Hell, there's even a tool now to install a MacBook Pro notch, if you'd like. My Xbox One gamepad works perfectly, as did my PS4 scuff controller, though I had a weird issue where Streets of Rage 4 wouldn't accept the square button during gameplay, even though it worked fine in the menus. But that seems to just be an issue with that game and PS4 controllers versus Xbox controllers in the first place. Hell, the PS4 scuff controller even lets you use the touchpad as a cursor right out of the box, and Garuda came with a program to set the controller up to control 
programs and the operating system in general. So TV PC wins here as well. My 3.5 millimeter connected speakers seem to work fine, as does my EPOS Sennheiser GSX 300 sound card. Nice. You've got control over hotkeys across your entire operating system and individual programs in one place, full control over updates, a tabbed file explorer, window snapping, virtual desktops, hell, there's even PowerShell for Linux. Plus, you can put your home directory on its own drive uh, if you want and have much easier backups, persistence across multiple reinstallations, keep it around for decades. It's wild. Of course, a lot of streaming stuff still doesn't work. Go XLR doesn't really work at all. Elgato Wave works for basic in and out, even with ClipGuard, but no LED indicators or multiple audio tracks. And uh, I just made a video about Linux compatible capture cards, as many do not work. A lot of these devices will never work, as the manufacturers won't support it, and it's a little too hardcore for the community to work around and develop their own tools. But there are community developed tools for things like RGB controllers, there's a whole slew of like Stream Deck compatibility apps and plugins. Uh, progress is being made. Audio is kind of the worst part right now. I know this has been a long video, but hot damn, I just really wanted to geek out over how great of an experience this has been and how fun it has been installing a bunch of games with platinum and gold ratings on ProtonDB. It's like setting up a new game console for the first time. Since it's kind of forcing me to take a break from my usual multiplayer games, I'm clearing out some of my backlog finally, which is awesome. Hades is incredible. Go watch the Noclip documentary on it. That being said, while it did take a little fighting to get installed at first and I had to send fixes to the Lutris script, the COD 4X mod of Call of Duty 4, IW4X for Modern Warfare 2, as well as Plutonium for Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3, and World at War, which give you custom content, unlocked FPS, FOV changes, and much bigger player bases, all do run really well on Linux too. I'm amazed. My classic games are still going strong. Here's to you, Garuda team. No, no, here's not to you, Garuda team. I will give Garuda huge kudos for attempting to do something that most operating systems don't do, and that's providing everything an expected target user would need or want up front right out of the box that no operating system under the sun does today, be it Linux, Mac, Windows, otherwise. They do a good job at what they're attempting to do, but I think they're held back by what they're based off of and, you know, things out of their control. That being said, the good news is, is most of what I described here in terms of not the included software, but what actually works and is compatible is kind of true of Linux in general. <laughs> I didn't realize this because my last attempt at full-time Endeavor was back in 2018 after Proton launched and my attempt to get things set up back in June, apparently a specific NVIDIA driver was broken or something. It didn't end super well and I just hadn't bothered in a little while. But all of the, you know, game compatibility, my specific devices I listed, the controllers working, all of that still applied to Kubuntu. So that was really nice to see, and since it's the same desktop environment, I mostly got the same aesthetics, the wobbly windows that I love. I, I wish we could get the other Compass effects that I was melting my laptops with back in high school, but uh, Wayfire's supposed to be bringing that forward. We'll see if that turns out. I, isn't working great on NVIDIA yet because Wayland isn't. Thankfully, I think I'm going to have just as smooth of an experience overall with Kubuntu. I just had to manually, you know, add in the features and the things that I want. Like I had to install all the dependencies for Lutris and all of that and get Steam installed. OBS in the included app store in Kubuntu is like three versions behind for some reason. I never understand why that's a thing, uh, but you can just add the repository for OBS Studio to get the official pipe of OBS installation and then install it that way. Works fine and NVENC works fine. And in my initial, I've only recorded one game, but in my singular game test, I wasn't getting the bursts of encoding lag that I was getting on Garuda for some reason. Could just be a fluke. I haven't actually recorded Splitgate yet, which is where it really fl flared up. So we'll see. It might actually be performing better, which is pretty cool. Uh, the only thing I had to do was performance out of the box in Hades was a little wonk. It kept like freezing at random points, but the game was still running. The visuals would just freeze. Uh, you have to enable the background shader processing in Steam and it'll go through your games and that seemed to work out a lot better. <sighs> Otherwise, we're, we're, we're just gonna get this video rolling. I just, I, I wanted to be transparent here because I originally made this video when I was on cloud nine of finally like my dreams had mostly come true in terms of at least for gaming side, Linux being viable and seemingly the best option for users wanting to jump in and have everything kind of configured for them because I think that's partially important especially because you have to go through and do so much to get some of this set up by default, or you used to. Uh, and these days it does seem a lot better, given that it was such a positive video and I was kind of ignoring a couple seams because they weren't a huge deal, like the download speeds. I assumed it was on my end after seeing it in Kabutu. I don't. Um, <laughs> I think it's transparent that I still provide this. I don't think it's necessarily the best. I've made videos in the past where it's just me after two straight days of trying to troubleshoot things and the community just being absolutely toxic as hell as usual and me just being like, yo, look at this, this is terrible, I'm done. Uh, I didn't, I, I wanted to jump on the past couple days and make those videos, 
and I decided that wasn't the way to go, so I waited till I had things working again and was a little bit more calm and chill. Huge shout outs to the people on our Discord server in the Linux channel, as well as the people in the Lutra server and a couple people on Twitter who helped me work through things in a proper mindset a little bit and remind me that most of the people who you see saying these terrible things don't represent what Linux people want them to. They're just terrible vocal minorities or something. I, I think it was important to be transparent that for all the positive things I said in this video, Linux is still Linux. It's not a consumer operating system. It's a it's an operating system designed where the users are also, I think it's misleading to say developers, like they're not necessarily expected to be developers, but you're expected to be someone who partakes in the process of tinkering and tweaking and things like that. And inherently due to all of the things going on with Linux, the open source nature, all, there's so much that comes with that in terms of lack of funds, not bringing in private people for studies to f watch their ever move as they use an operating system like Apple would do. You know, there's a ton that comes in the open source bubble on top of it being mostly volunteers, on top of them not having private ownership. There are some private entities involved with Linux, but most of those come with a $10,000 person that manages your Red Hat installation or CentOS installation. Uh, <laughs> Inherently due to all the ways that Linux works, it is not a consumer operating system where the end user is expected to just have a smooth experience and have the support in place that they do with Mac or Windows. And that is frankly never going to happen. And until the community or the vocal minority, the community or the developers, because I've had quite a few of you end up in the comments and my emails were just being insane, uh, gets over their anti-user mindsets, I think Linux is doomed in terms of the year of the Linux desktop. But I still, I get so angry because I truly believe in what Linux and open source is about. Uh, my entire channel is kind of built on supporting an open source program as an alternative to the industry standards at the time. Like, I truly believe in what it's about. I have used it since I was a kid. I want to support the endeavor, but there's just so many situations where I can't use it for myself and I'm always frustrated with that fact and I want to try to fix it and get frustrated that there seems to be no option for it, but also frustrated at the community for as far as I'm concerned, ruining the whole thing and making that more, much more difficult to both advocate for and actually be a part of. So go finish the video. Thank you for hearing this secondary rant part of it. Hope you had a great ho Halloween holiday if you celebrate it. And let me know your thoughts on all of this mess in the description below. Again, I really want to make a, I think I really want to make a Linux demystified series targeted at gamers and streamers where I explain things like distros and flavors and how to do the things that it says to open the terminal for without opening the terminal, like adding repositories, how to manage your drivers. How to when Kubuntu, you install Kubuntu on an NVIDIA system and it doesn't set no mode set for Grub, so it just locks at your BIOS screen and you think you don't have access to your operating system anymore after three reinstalls. Things like that. And just make it a slow pace series instead of like an all at once masterclass. Make it a slow pace series where I have a couple videos where I know what I want to talk about and then kind of go based on your feedback. But let me know if you want to see that at all in the comments below because I'm going to be heavy filtering with the comments on that because Every time I talk about Linux, there's always the it's GNU slash Linux and you're doing it wrong. And how dare you use an NVIDIA GPU and you're doing it the Windows way, which is all just utter noise that needs filtered out. But I want to do it if it would actually help some people get where they want to go. And I want to show off the Stream Deck apps for it and things like that. So, yeah, thank you. I'm going to stop interrupting this video now. I made it like three times as long as it originally was. I hope Linus and Luke get things going a little bit more smoothly soon. I've been where they were dozens of times. I usually stop trying to do anything but office work and web browsing on Linux after a certain point, just on the principle of you shouldn't treat users that way. And for much of that, I still feel that way, but I finally found a distro that works both for my, you know, niche needs and the best beginner experience. And I want to spread the word. This might also be a good time to do an introductory kind of Linux gaming series, so comment below if you want that. Otherwise, drop kick that like button, comment about how it's GNU slash Linux or how I'm doing everything wrong so I can shadow ban you, and join us on Discord at discord.gg slash We have a Linux chat there. Remember, be kind, rewind.